this does not even pretend to be an exhaustive presentation on a near infrared detector. It's really just to give you an idea of the terminology that's going to be used throughout the workshop on uh, how to describe the exposure and so on, and uh, just to give you a very high level uh, description. So all the near infrared instruments, so apart from MIRI, they use the same kind of technology. It's a detector produced by Teledyne. They are Metafelm 2048 by 2048 pixel uh, in size. And there's the CMOS hybrid structure where the uh, sensitive layer has a different cutoff between 2.5 and 5.3 micron. And it's a bundle to a ROIC silicon readout circuit that allow the multiplexing. They are controlled like any detector by some electronics. In this case, are the, the again, Teledyne Sidecar ASICs, the one that's been uh, using uh, on the ACS uh, since uh, the last uh, repair in HST. Uh, they provide all the biasing clocking to the detector, the anal anal analog to digital conversion, and uh, transmit the data back to uh, the, the detector electronics. So each uh, detector and each ASICs are paired together. They sort of uh, uh, need to be tuned as a pair. So it's not a plug and play kind of uh, electronics. Uh, so the detector itself is called in the GWC world sensor, sensor chip assembly, SCA. And when you get a, one or more uh, SCAs on your focal plane, it is the FPA, the focal plane array. So, uh, as was mentioned before, each instrument has slightly different uh, configuration. Nearly has one FPA with just one ACA with the cutoff 5.3. Nearcam is uh, fully redundant, so uh, two sides. In each side, there is uh, one FPA for the short wavelength, which are four detectors with a cutoff of 2.5 micron, and then one FPA with one ACA for the uh, longer wavelength. And this pack is a 1 FPA with 2 SCA together with a 5.3 micron. And this is just a picture of a uh, pack and uh, NIRCAM FPAs. Just a bit of anatomy of a uh, 1 SCA. So it's a 2K by 2K, but only 2040 by 2040 is the area of sensitive pixel. All around, there is a 4 pixel wide frame of a reference pixel that are used to track drift in temperature and the biases that are used to correct data. Uh, on all the detector and all the, the uh, ASICs, there are actually 32 outputs that can be used, but uh, to keep the power dissipation down, uh, only four will be used. And so each output reads a, in a standard full frame mode a region, which is 512 by 2048. And the pixels are continuously clocked to maintain a power dissipation constant. And uh, so all the four outputs are read out in parallel and the data are sent serially to the ASICs, which then reorder them the way they were actually taken. So as I said, the standard full frame readout is for outputs. It takes 10.7 seconds to read the full frame. But you also have the option to have a subarray mode, which means that you can select a smaller region of the detector to read. There are certain rules you get to uh, when you define the window. And most of the windows actually are going to be predefined in the APT. And uh, the frame time depends on the size, because only one uh, output is used for subarray mode. And uh, so you can go from a very small exposure time to milliseconds to 42 seconds if you want to try to read the full chip with just one, sub uh, one output. Again, the, the list of available uh, um, subarrays is going to be in the APT. So these are nearly for the detector. Uh, CMOS allows them to peek to see what's the charge in each uh, pixel at any given time without erasing the charge. So you have information of during the exposure uh, of the charge keep accumulating and then you just get the, the slope to give you the count rate. And uh, this helps uh, to average down the noise. It also helps because you basically you maintain the history of the integration. So if you have a cosmic ray throughout your integration, you can still fit to slope in the two pieces of your integration. And also if you reach saturation, you can still derive the counter rate in the lower portion of your, your ramp. 
So this is what we call integration, typically. You can have multiple integration, multiple RAMs within one single exposure. Clearly the way you're going to define the APT is that all the integration in your exposure will be identical. So you will see in the next slide, you can define the, how many of these dots do you want, how many reads you want in uh, your integration. And uh, for each read, you will have your frame. So at the end, you can have your data cube. Uh, clearly, this is the optimum situation because you read uh, periodically. You get all information on the ground. You can use it to uh, to drive the slope and on, on different correction. But as Jeff was saying, I mean there are cases where data volume is a, is an issue, so we have to be a bit more creative. And there are two ways you can basically deal with it. So this is the full run with all the readouts. You can decide to skip some of the intermediate reads. So you have uh, the beginning of the ramp and the end of the ramp. And this is what we're going to call it the group gap. How many uh, groups, frames you're going to skip in your ramp. Or the uh, second alternative is to do some onboard averaging. And you define on board the number of frames you're going to average on, on, uh, on orbit. And you're going to just download the, the average group. So since all the instruments are slightly different, got different tuning and especially different requirements, the combination uh, is, uh, or the optimal parameter is different. And again, uh, like NIRCAM that have uh, 10 detectors, they are gonna be more, uh, worst offender in terms of how much uh, data they're gonna download. So uh, you don't have to uh, go to the table. Some of them will be repeated the next, uh, next days on specific modes. But you see, for example, that uh, for NIRIS and NISPEC, basically you have just the option to get all the data or grouping uh, from four frames at a time. For NIRCAM, you have much more options depending on your kind of science. You don't have uh, group gaps and uh, different kind of combinations. For NISPEC, we have also what is called the R square. Uh, I have just one slide and this is a poster outside. So you can keep this as my first presentation for later on. Uh, most of the NISPEC observation will be detector limited. Uh, <coughs> there's also for the most stringent requirement in terms of total noise. A team at Goddard analyzed the noise property detector to and define basic a scheme. It's gonna be only available for NISPEC in full frame mode. It's called the improved reference sampling and subtraction. Basically they found that the uh, in simple word, the recipe to beat down the noise and uh, reduce the noise correlation in the trying to send more reference pieces on the ground and read them more frequently. So what happens is that uh, the typical frame you have here on the on the bottom left, which is 2K by 2K, you're gonna have a much more reference file, reference pixels and down, so the frame will be uh, bigger, 3200 instead of uh, 2048 pixel wide. The time frames will be different. But you see on the bottom the difference in terms of uh, once you produce the, reduce the data, you have a much, much less uh, noise correlation. Again, if you have more, more details and uh, what is being entailed in terms of the analysis and uh, why and where the pixels are taken, <coughs> just stop it to the poster. So there are other things you might want to familiarize with, which uh, they are not ideal behavior of the detector. So these are indeed the state of the heart for near infrared astronomy detectors, especially for a, a mission that is launching in two years from now. And uh, they're however not perfect. You have cases of what is called cosmetic, if you want uh, features. Yeah, it's called a picture frame, something that a small variation in temperature will show up on, on uh, your data that need to be corrected. Uh, this is the NISPE detector. Uh, but all of them show similar behavior. This is near the detector. You have on, in the center what is called a void. It's during the manufacturing process, there were some imperfections. In that region, you have different uh, sensitivity, different dark rate. Everything is sort of tracked in reference file that have been uh, corrected to use to, to correct the data. You have families of bad pixel. Likely, all the new detectors are fairly nice. It seems that you have it usually less than half percent of bad, detect bad pixel, they can be dead, completely unresponsive. They can produce hot pixel, produce light even uh, without uh, illumination. 
you have a anomalous pixel or pixel that just jump up and down, so RPM pixel. They are going to be the, the, uh, flagged in the dot data quality file associated with your exposures, and then some of them will be automatically rejected when you start combining the data. Then, of course, you have typical uh, near infrared uh, detector behaviors like non linearities and persistence. Persistence is something that's been uh, looked uh, quite a lot recently. So, if you have a, a bright observation of very bright objects, their imprint show up in its following exposures just because some of the charts have been trapped. Um, recently, on the detector conference, uh, there are many, many groups that are looking into it. Uh, the Institute is developing a model at least to start to flagging in exploring exposure if a pixel might have been impacted by a previous exposure. So if you see some uh, signal, it might just be, be belong to the previous exposure. And maybe uh, in the future, there will be some correction. So just as a summary, again, it's just a very quick overview just to get some terminology. All the GWC near infrared detector are really the state of the art. The ASIC sidecar, I have a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, driving the detector and performing tuning the performance. They do, however, also add uh, quite a lot of uh, correlated noise. All instruments are is different. Uh, they have uh, different requirements. They've been tuned differently. Some operational aspects are different, so I do expect variation. Uh, some of the detector not ideal behavior are well understood. Others are still under characterization and they will be corrected, mitigated, or flagged, depending on what's the solution. And uh, I'm pretty sure that at least in a couple of cases, the ground testing facilities that have been used to characterize the detector will still be operated during operation of the JWST, which means that we're gonna have on the ground a very similar set setup that will allow us to investigate potential issues that we see on orbit and also to develop uh, uh, operational mitigation or improvements. And I think that was it. Yes. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes for questions. I've got one. <laughs> I've never really understood the group averaging thing, Marco. What's in it for the observer? Because why don't they just say, well, I, want to, I thought the, it was a limitation on data rate, yeah. on, the, on the daily download rate. So if I'm putting in a program, I'll just say, I want all the frames, please. Yeah, yeah well, you know, sometimes you might want to do parallels. And uh, having a group averaging allows you to take two instances. Yeah, but but are, there, are there rules which are going to be implemented via the APT or something like that? So if you put I, in I, a proposal as parallels, yes, then... Yes, I go yeah. back to the GWST banner. Are there going to be rules? Uh, <laughs> Okay, fair enough, yeah. I mean, it, it's not clear that there are rules. So there are rules behind that that, that limits the, the overall volume. And they're okay. going to be implemented in APT. That yes. was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. And once you fix NERCAM, you're in good shape. Is there a yeah. Oh, I know, I know it's NERCAM. Yeah, I'm, I'm Miri, I don't, you know. Yes. <laughs> not a problem for us, but yeah. Sorry, there's a question here. Quantum efficiency they, they meet uh, quite easily the requirement. I, th I think it's of the order of 80%, almost uh, the full uh, spectrum. So the between uh, both in the short wave rate and the long wave rate, and also the the dark rate is very low. And noise, more or less, everyone meets the requirement. And uh, 
Yes, you can, you can find the, uh, we can put on the, the workshop some uh, published paper on the detector where I show the performance. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Marco.